Hi guys and welcome back to another devlog about Skyland. There's been a lot of progress over the last two weeks so let's get started. The first thing I worked on was the world generation. Right now it just randomly places objects all over the place. To make it a little prettier I created a density map for the trees on the fly. So now you get areas which look like really dense forests and places that are way more open than before. And in the future I will also work on other biomes as well. I also added flowers and roots that can spawn around the world to give it more life. The next thing was kind of a huge task, even though it doesn't look like it at first. So those rocks that spawn around the world are actual structures that modify the world. They remove grass around them and turn the ground into dirt. Since structures can overlap with other chunks and those chunks might not be generated yet, I had to save parts of the structures into a file and when the proper chunk gets loaded, I spawn the previously generated structure on top of it. This system allows me to create huge things like floating cities and strongholds, but for now I just spawn those rocks into the world. Now have a look at that mess. If I would try to reproduce this on purpose, I would never achieve something like this. Sometimes I'm fascinated by the things that happen when you mess up such a little thing. I changed my chunk shader to a flat color transitions, but I didn't like the look of it, so I switched it back. The birds for now will be only a visual thing that is based on the client, but I might change that in a later stage. My goal with the birds was to make them as fast as they can be, so basically that I could render hundreds of birds with a single draw call and do the animation fully in the vertex shader. I just created a very low poly model for them since they don't need a lot of detail anyways. The animation consists of a simple sine wave applied to the bird. The first group of sine waves just modifies the wings and lets them flap up and down. The other group of sine waves just makes the entire bird move up and down and combined you get a pretty nice bird animation without using a skeletal animation system. Now I grouped up a bunch of them and gave them random colors which are basically their ID. The ID is used to give them a slight time offset so they don't flap at the same time. In the background is a nice little clip with all of this stuff in action. It doesn't eat a lot of performance because it is only a single draw call. The next step was to create the particle system to let them fly around the world and then this happened. Yep. That doesn't seem right. So here's the working thing. I realized that the group birds look kinda weird so I decided to only use a single bird. The reason for adding them was because this guy felt a little dead to me and now when you look up you can see that there is stuff happening around the world. As mentioned in the last devlog I'm going to finally add the water mechanic. So yeah, here it is, a basic swimming mechanic. Obviously the water still looks like crap so I had to change that as well. Over the course of working on the water I had a transparency bug which changed the look of the fire to this and honestly it looks way better than before so I kept it like that. I also made some adjustments to the fog while working on the water. So this is how it looks right now, but this isn't the final result yet. I tweaked the water colors over the course of the upcoming clips a couple of times. The next thing on my to-do list was to create the effect when you emerge from the water. This is the final result and I think it looks pretty nice. Later on in the game you will be able to prevent this blurriness by equipping some goggles. If you wanna recreate this effect just have a look at the description. There's a great tutorial on how to create this effect. I also changed some of my internal storage code to optimize the amount of data stored for liquids. On the way this little thing happened, a world full of oceans. Even though it was a bug I kinda liked how it looked. After I fixed that I created the swimming mechanics for the goblins and kiwis. I also made some swimming animations for them. Another thing that I added is some basic underwater foliage. To do that I had to add some additional information to my world generation like for example how deep the water is. When the water is shallow it will spawn reeds and if it is deeper it will spawn some other underwater plants. This results in having only reeds on the riverbed borders. Ok more graphical changes. At first when working on this game I decided to not have ambient occlusion for foliage which gave it this flat stylist look. But I decided to add it back in because it gives the world a lot of depth and an overall better look in my opinion. I will give the players the option to disable ambient occlusion anyways so if some of you like the other look more you can simply disable it. I also finally added the swimming animations into the game and you can see them here in action in multiplayer as well. The last addition to the game over the last two weeks are those god rays from the sun and the moon. Yes. I finally added them. They don't use the shadow map for the calculation so they disappear when you don't look at the sun but on the other hand they also work when you disable shadows. So yeah I'm pretty satisfied with the result and that's pretty much it for the progress over the last two weeks. I'm not sure yet on what I will focus over the next two weeks. It might be on other biomes or on more actual gameplay stuff. We will see. If you have any feedback make sure to leave it in the comment section and I will see you guys hopefully in the next episode. Bye.